Good morning again, everyone. Um, it is 9.01. I see lots of people are still coming in through the waiting room, um, which is great. But in the interest of time, I think we're going to go ahead and dive right on in. So thank you all so much for being here this morning. Uh, my name is Sarah Powell, and I'm really pleased to welcome all of you to the second annual Long Island Sound Sustainable and Resilient Communities by State Workshop. So we're really glad all of you are able to join us this morning. We know it's a really extremely busy time of year, so appreciate your time with us. And like I said, I know people are going to continue to filter in, but we're going to get started. So first off, um, I want to just remind everyone about sort of the rules for today's workshop. Um, we are asking everyone to kindly keep your phones and audio on mute, if you will, unless you're speaking, um, and then keep your cameras off maybe for the majority of the workshop as well to preserve bandwidth. Uh, we'd like everyone to please use the chat for any questions that you might have throughout the workshop or to ask for help with technical issues. Uh, we will do our best to help you with any, any problems that come up. We are going to be keeping record of all the questions that people put in the chat and comments um, today for all of our various sessions. And we're gonna do our best to answer them live, but we will follow up after the workshop if necessary. So um, we are also going to be recording everything today and all the recordings and workshop materials will be made available to everyone uh, afterward, likely early in the new year. And then last but not least, we're going to be using some interactive polls uh, today to, to help gather feedback and get everybody interacting. And we're going to dive into the first one in a moment, but I wanted to quickly go over and just recap the agenda for the day. Hopefully all of you have received it. Um, but first, we are going to give you a, new, a first look at our new Long Island Sound Resilience Resource Hub. Um, our team is really excited about this new resource and hope that you are going to enjoy the look, the first look at the beta site today and get excited for it to go live very soon. And then after that, we're going to have our first round of concurrent breakout sessions. In one room, you'll be able to learn about Long Island Sound Studies' commitment to environmental justice. And then in the other, you can learn about the Coastal County Snapshots tool that's available from NOAA's Digital Coast. After that, we're gonna take a brief stretch break um, and then come back here into the main room where we'll hear from communities around Long Island Sound who are engaged in resilience building through planning and vulnerability assessment efforts. And then we'll take one more quick break before we go into our last round of concurrent sessions. Um, both of these rooms will be focused on considerations for updating codes and ordinances to increase resilience. This was a topic that we heard um, a lot of interest about last year. Uh, and so we've got the two rooms uh, that you can join based on whether you'd like to hear what's happening in Connecticut or in New York. And we know some of you might be interested actually in both states. So again, that's why everything will be recorded. And uh, you will also be able to move between the rooms if, if you would like to. Okay, and then we'll wrap up and say thank you so much. And we'll all go eat lunch. <laughs> and uh, so now it's time for our first polls of the day. Uh, if you were here last year, you may remember Poll Everywhere. And if you weren't, that's okay. Um, so Poll Everywhere is the technology that we're going to primarily be using today to run our interactive polls. And I'm going to show some instructions here in a second. But I want to note um, if everyone will please hold off on responding to this first one until I get through all the instructions, because there's one important thing to note about how to respond to this first one most effectively. Um, and we're going to be putting some information in the chat on this as well. So you have two uh, options for interacting with the polls. Let me go ahead and bring the first one up. Um, you can answer them in a browser window on your computer or phone or via text on your phone. So to answer in a browser, you navigate to the uh, website shown at the top there, pollev.com backslash L-I-S-R-E-S. You can also scan the QR code on the screen here, to, which will take you to that same web address in a browser on your phone. Um, it's important to note that wherever you're in the browser, leave it open. These poll questions will update as we move along through our presentation today. And then if you are participating uh, via text, you can text L-I-S-R-E-S -E to 22333. You'll get a text notifying that you've joined the session. So wait to get that before you answer. And then don't click the link that you get when you text um, that tells you join the session. I don't know why they do that. It's confusing. But no matter how you're answering for this first one, um, we'd like to know something that you love about your Long Island Sound community. Uh, this is going to populate a word cloud. So if you have a short phrase or sentence that you want to share, you need to connect your words with underscores in order for them to stay together in the word cloud. 
And we know that we may have some folks here um, today who maybe don't actually live in the Long Island Sound watershed. Welcome. So please also, you know, tell us something that you love about Long Island Sound too. Something you like to go. Um, we'd like to see what everybody has to say. So I'll give all of you a few seconds, more than a few seconds, but a little bit of time to answer this. And if you have any questions, um, again, please do put them in the chat and we can try to help you. But it looks like everyone is um, getting the hang of pull everywhere so far. This is great. It's like biodiversity is, is something that we all really value. The diversity of our community is, I see beauty popping up, yeah. We'll leave this up for just a few more seconds. Trying to catch the words and they're moving all around. So yeah, I see lots about partnerships and our communities, the diversity of our communities, the biodiversity of the sound. Oh, I see appreciation in there, yeah. Oh, this is fantastic. It looks like, you know, no matter where we are in the sound, that there is some some commonality between things that we we value and love about Long Island Sound, which is great. Um, so next up, we have a different type of uh, poll everywhere question, and this one is to help us get a sense of who is in the room with us today. So in a second here, I'm going to click over um, and you'll be able to indicate, you know, your affiliation or the sector that best represents you. And for those of you participating via text, you're going to text. Let's see here. Let me go on and click over. Um, you know, A, B, C, whichever letter corresponds to your ex your answer. We'll text that in. We'll see who's here. Awesome. I lost track of my Zoom window to see how many people are in here, but I see we've had a number of responses are ticking up. This is good. So far, nonprofits are leading the way, the most representation. It's a few more seconds to chime in. We were about a little more than halfway on participation. And while you're all getting in your, your final answers, I will note that we have one more um, question for this opening session. Unfortunately, it is only for people who are participating in a browser window. So I'm sorry, texters. Um, but this next one is to see where everyone is joining us from today. So this next question, you should see a map pop up um, and you can click on the map to show where you're tuning in from. Apologies also to anyone who may be tuning in from outside the extent of the map shown here. You know, feel free to put in the chat where you're joining us from. That goes, to, same goes to those folks who are, are maybe participating via text and can't click here. We'd love to know where everybody's tuning in from today. Great. Let's see, we have some folks from up in Albany and Massachusetts, Ithaca, another vote for Bridgeport. Great. Okay, I'm going to give everyone a few more seconds to, to chime in and click. Um, but I will note that's that's our last poll for right now, but more polls will be back a little bit later. So like I said, make sure to leave your browser window open if you're you're participating um in that manner but for now i'm going to dive get us right back into um our content for today and uh wanted to just very quickly cover you know as hopefully everyone on the call is aware um long island sound study or, or LIS, as we sometimes call it is a national estuary program led by the environmental protection agency uh that function functions as a partnership to protect and restore long island sound and its watershed um, and we wanted to know just that the work of, of Long Island Sound and the partnership is guided by a comprehensive conservation management plan or CCMP um, that is organized around the four main themes that you see here. So I and my colleagues work as extension professionals focused on that third theme, the sustainable and resilient communities theme or the SRC theme as we call it. 
Um, and we work to provide resources and guidance to help communities address climate impacts and other challenges in the coastal zone of the Long Island Sound watershed in Connecticut, New York, which is shown in this next graphic here. So as you can see, there are five regions and accordingly, um, we are a team of five people. And because sustainable and resilient communities extension professionals is kind of a mouthful, we often will just call ourselves um, SRCs for short. And so in New York, we have Elizabeth Hornstein, she's the SRC for Suffolk County. Sarah Schaefer Brown is the SRC for Nassau County. Um, myself, I'm Sarah Powell, is the SRC for Westchester County. And then in Connecticut, Deb Abibu is the SRC for Western Connecticut. And then last but not least, Sarah Schechter is the SRC for Eastern Connecticut. And since I've asked most of you to turn your cameras off, I can't see your faces, but I wanna make sure everyone, um, you know, your ears aren't deceiving you. 60% of our team is in fact named Sarah, but uh, we've worked out a system to keep us all straight. And, you know, we work together pretty well. We haven't had to, the Sarahs haven't had to band together to, to wield power as a voting block or anything yet. So with that, I am gonna pass it now to Sarah Shaver Brown, who's gonna talk a little bit more about our work before we turn it over to Deb, who's going to unveil our resilience resource hub. Sarah, I'm gonna pass it to you. All right, thanks so much, Sarah. Um, good morning, everybody. So I'm just gonna talk briefly about some of our other work. Um, if you are not, if you have not tuned into one of our workshops, this may be new to you, but I know some of you have been regular attendees. So, you know, all of our work, as Sarah said, is focused on achieving that sustainable and resilient goal of the Long Island Sound Study CCMP. So all of our work is centered around making sure that Long Island Sound communities can um, be better prepared and anticipate or overcome disturbances while achieving well-being for all. Um, we have kind of you know five main areas that we work in. Um, we will be continuing to hold trainings and workshops, uh, you know, throughout the course of our of our time. And um, one of these examples is, is this annual bi-state workshop we're holding today. We held one last year and um, we'll continue to hold bi-state workshops for New York and Connecticut um, every December um, going forward to really bring, bring together the community and share information and um, create more networks. Um, as you'll hear in a few moments, we're very close to launching a Long Island Sound Resilience Resource Hub which is going to be a simple user-friendly portal for accessing Long Island Sound information. Uh, we are working with US Geological Survey on a Long Island-wide compound flood risk model, which we hope to soon be available for users. We've rolled out more opportunities as part of our Breakdown Barriers program that you'll hear about in, a, in just a few minutes from me. And then uh, we're continuing to work to advance high impact projects locally within all of our regions and across regions, um, and also promote best management practices or BMPs through our on the ground work with, with those communities. So next slide. So our team uh, over the course of the past two years have you know, made a lot of connections, learned from a lot of you about what your needs are, and we developed these breakdown barriers programs to assist with the development of sustainability and resilience focused projects that will impact communities or uh, a community that's within the Long Island Sound coastal boundary. So as many of you have seen on October 16th of this year, we launched a new Long Island Sound resilience planning support program. And in addition to a second round, of the Long Island Sound Resilience Grant Writing Assistance Program. And those are available to municipalities and community organizations and nonprofits to apply and use. So these separate programs, there's track one and track two. All of um, the support is funded through the US EPA, through the Long Island Sound Study and administered through New York Sea Grant and Connecticut Sea Grant. And I'll just briefly mention that the track one program the planning support program provides assistance to New York and Connecticut communities to help identify and develop sustainability and resilience focused projects. The program is really focused on helping communities um, develop kind of local climate risk assessments or conceptualize project ideas or conduct preliminary planning efforts to be then well positioned to go on to get um, or pursue funding for design and implementation 
of successful uh, sustainability and resilience focused projects. And then through that track two program, that program is focused on grant preparation and writing. Um, New York and Connecticut communities can apply to that to get assistance to uh, support hiring a grant writing or grant preparation grant writing um, support uh, contractor. And that will allow that applicant, the community or the um, community organization to then be able to be more successful in getting a grant that they wish to get for their project and also develop more of a uh, knowledge and um, awareness of the funding landscape and all the different grants that are out there and how to apply to them. Uh, so we will be going into more detail on that in a little bit. There are links in the chat to learn more. So please let us know if you have more questions. There's a lot of information on the Long Island Sound Study website right now for those. So that's all I wanted to mention. And I believe now I'm gonna hand it over to Deb to talk about our uh, resource hub. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, hello, everyone, and thanks so much for spending your Thursday morning with us. Um, hope everybody is settled in now with a good uh, cup of coffee or tea. Today, I'm uh, really excited to share with you all a tool that we've been developing uh, to help address issues that surfaced from our recent needs assessment. Problems that we heard uh, during the needs assessment included limited capacity uh, and experience managing projects. Uh, a lot of groups had difficulty finding or accessing relevant resources. And we also heard about challenges with navigating the large uh, number of funding opportunities, which um, is in some ways a good problem to have, uh, but something to address nonetheless. So uh, a resilience resource hub website could help to solve these problems by highlighting uh, helpful case studies, curating relevant resources, and um, by becoming an easy to use resilience funding opportunity database. The um, main objectives here, um, focused on uh, the website being something that is easy to use. Um, we really envision this website as something that could expand our capacity to assist stakeholders. And it's our ultimate goal to empower our communities uh, to craft plans um, and to more easily move through the grant and permitting applications to help facilitate implementation and uh, foster the sharing of best practices uh, amongst each other. We targeted um, the stakeholder types listed here, uh, including uh, various municipal officials, nonprofits, and other various community groups. Um, and now, you know, it's important that we share back our progress um, on this website with our stakeholders. And um, we're also involving um, many of them by uh, coursing, I mean, involving <laughs> into the, the testing phase of the website that we're moving into um, to help refine it. We can uh, distill the main goal uh, of our stakeholders as wanting to quickly and easily find the most pertinent resources and tools to assist with advancing the sustainability and resilience uh, of their community. So while keeping that in mind and uh, helping to meet this need, we uh, have set this up so visitors to the resource hub can expect to find the best available local climate projections, resources that have been vetted uh, to ensure that they're relevant to local issues and local conditions. And we've been collecting these resources over the past two years, and this site will allow us to continually uh, add to it and keep them updated. 
Um, we also hope that visitors will find project inspiration um, and that that could encourage the transfer of effective solutions. So now I will share my screen here. and give a little demo walkthrough of our beta website. Uh, developing this website has uh, been a really fun uh, and interesting process. Um, I was thinking about it and it kind of has reminded me of um, like baking a dessert from Pinterest where you know how you want it to come out, but uh, it's, way more complicated than you thought it would be. <laughs> and after you start, you remember that it needed to be vegan and gluten-free, um, and you just hope that you don't wind up on the show Nailed It. Um, but we're really um, proud of you know, what we have uh, developed so far, and uh, we're you know, excited to you know, get it into, um, you know, through this testing phase and into um, production. So I wanna show you here um, on the homepage that we have um, drop-down navigations. Um, we've set up um, the steps to resilience here. Uh, and you'll see that on this bar here um, to um, show that you can look for resources according to the phase of project planning that you're in. Also here we have listed the main types of tools that we feature, a little bit about us and a search function. And front and center in the home page, this is um, a decision tree where um, you can use these three filters um, to navigate for your resources. There's a few other ways that you can enter the resources uh, that I would like to go through. So the first is using these resilience steps. So if I click here on learn, um, I'm brought to a page where all of the resources tagged for this category appear. And um, you know this is a sort of category where you're looking to get background type information. And again, you can, then access those three filters to further refine what you're looking for. So um, each card here um, is labeled with the type of resource that it is, there's a little icon. And then um, most of them uh, have a, a level of effort involved. So that can give you an idea of how complex this resource is. You can uh, maybe judge how deep you want to get into it. And then uh, these are topic labels uh, that match whichever topics are applied to that resource in particular. So for example, in this learn phase, let's say I'm in Fairfield County and I want to learn a little bit more about extreme weather and storms. So here, um, I'm returned results that are specific to Connecticut. So uh, you know, selecting Fairfield County, for example, it's gonna exclude, say, the resources that are specific to Long Island. Um, so these would include some that are national, but also you know, some that um, are, you know, might be more specific to the county level. Um, as you can see, here's like a My Coast from Greenwich. And then you can click on a card uh, to learn a little bit more about it. And then um, it will have a link that would take you directly to that resource. So heading back to the main page, I can try this again if I'm in the planning phase. So um, I can 
navigate for, you know, let's say I'm just in Connecticut in general and I'm doing planning and um, I'm working on stormwater management. So now um, I'm returned relevant Connecticut results for stormwater management, like this um, deep stormwater quality manual. Oh, I see this is kind of an intense resource, but I can click here to learn more. And then, you know, if I want to, you know, go ahead and, and open the link. So now if I'm working in an implementation type project, you know, let's say I'm working in um, Suffolk County, I can look for something on water quality implementation. And um, here I can see resources such as, you know, this specific, you know, Suffolk County septic improvement program. Uh, so, you know, you can, again, get more information clicking on that card. And then if I wanted to move into the sustain filter, uh, here, you know, let's try a different area. Let's say I'm in Westchester and I want to learn more about nature-based solutions. Now I'm going to be uh, returned uh, results, including um, you know, a shoreline monitoring framework. So, you know, when I'm in um, this sustain um, phase of planning, I'm thinking about, you know, monitoring. So this is going to be relevant to, um, you know, having our, keeping your project uh, functioning into the future. So another way that you can access resources is through a map by location. So this would be, you could zoom in a little bit more here. And um, again, we have a county selector. Um, so this is just another way that you can, you know, start up the filters. So you're going to be returned anything that's relevant to <clears throat> to New Haven County. And then again, you could um, filter further if you wanted to look into flooding resources. You don't have to select a planning phase. This could just be general, you know, anything um, related to flooding here in uh, that section of Connecticut. So um, if you're interested in these topics also, um, that is, uh, there's also a feature on the homepage where um, you can filter by the topic. Uh, so for example, I can select economic impacts and um, I'm returned, you know, this resource of the Atlas of Disaster that's, you know, has a specific economic impact topic. Um, you know, again, I can click on it and learn a little bit more. We also have a feature here where we can highlight um, specific, let's say, new resources. So um, we've highlighted one that's going to be featured in our workshop here, the um, Digital Coast County Snapshots tool, our funding database, um, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, say we want to highlight a certain um, fund um, of our funding database, like LISIF. I could, uh, you could see that here, something from our trainings archive. And oh, look at this upcoming event, our annual bi-state workshop. Uh, so this is a place you could go to look for, you know, something that's new, you know, featured case study or similar. So, um, 
we also have um, a funding database. So the funding database um, is somewhat separate from the other resources uh, because of the, the dates involved. And um, we've added some features uh, to help navigate um, based on things like the, you know, which grants are open. Um, and then you can also additionally use any of the other filters um, that we talked about before, the planning phase of the location or topic. Uh, and there's an additional filter for the applicant type uh, in terms of eligibility. So um, these are some just examples, but um, the way that this will function is that uh, you will see uh, a little countdown timer so you know how long you have to apply. And uh, since we have the, the grant writing assistance available, we've also added a tag for um, funding sources where that applies, uh, meaning that if it's in, within the window when you can still apply for grant writing assistance from us, we've flagged that here. Uh, and then these funding cards will, um, you know, let you know when they are due, give a little information on the amount available. Um, you can also see things that are upcoming and ones that are closed from a period of time um, in case that's helpful as a reference. And then, you know, you can click, um, you know, on these cards to see a little bit more information and then will be a link to take you right um, to that source. So we uh, also mentioned that uh, we had some case studies. So the case studies are uh, a selected feature of, uh, of resilience related projects Oops. where um, you can see what your neighbors have been up to. Let's see what's happening in the case studies. get into one specifically. All right, looks like the website is not happy about the case studies at the moment. Um, we have, uh, we have a, a map feature where um, you can see where the case studies are geographically. Uh, we've heard a lot, you know, from uh, conversations, you know, with people in our areas that they're interested to know what their neighbors are up to. So um, through the featured case studies, you know, you can have a look at um, some of these projects and then learn more. We've included information, not just summarizing it, but uh, about how the projects were funded, um, you know, what, um, what they needed, um, you know, what the performance has been, um, if that applies as well. Okay, let me see if I can show you that map. There we go. Um, so again, this is a, just a selection that, um, you know, will um, grow over time, but you can, um, you know, click here and all right, you can see here the Strong Pond Dam, um, you know, is featured and um, there's a link to it, learn a little bit more. And these will be fleshed out a little bit with some additional information. Okay. We also um, have an archive of past trainings. So trainings that um, our team has been involved in in some way. Uh, again, you can filter by where you are or our topics. And um, in these, 
you can open up a card and you know go right ahead and view the video uh, if there was a recording associated with that presentation or any other materials are are right there. Uh, we also have uh, a page that features um, upcoming trainings and events. So um, these are just some sample ones, but um, the events will feature also um, a little countdown to remind you how long you have um, to register, um, if it's a training or a different type of event. And um, we'll also be able to have a month view if there's a lot going on in a certain month. Uh, so I'm next going to show you uh, a unique um, uh, feature that we're, we've built out here, which is um, a guide to resilience planning. And um, this is a set of criteria that we developed to help you identify and prioritize projects that are sustainable and resilient. So we uh, adopted and adapted um, the this persists criteria from CIRCA, Connecticut's Institute for Resilience and Climate Adaptation. And um, this is the, um, the acronym uh, definitions here. And so when and why would you use this? So, um, here, this these sets of guiding questions could be used um, to help design projects uh, to improve a project's chances of getting funding and moving forward, um, or to help you decide which potential projects would be most effective to advancing resilience in your community um, or would be most sustainable into the future. So um, for each of the, uh, the letters of the PERSIS acronym, um, we have a little bit more information about you know, what that would mean in this context, and then um, you know, sets of questions that you could uh, think about applying to your project. And then we also have tagged specific resources to assist um, with developing um, that criteria. So for example, for equitable, um, we're framing it as a project that would consider input from and impacts to vulnerable populations. There's a set of questions to think about. And then um, you can view resources specifically related to that. For example, you know, EJ screen um, or some other you know, tools like neighborhoods at risk. Um, and you could see this um, American Planning Association um, equity and zoning policy guide. So it can, you know, take you right to those resources. And Next, um, we also have a page where you can um, connect with us and learn a little bit more about our work and these projects. So uh, different map on this page. You can kind of see it highlight um, for the region that you're in, where we work currently. And um, when you select a region, you can see who your SRC uh, extension professional is and have their contact information and have a way to sign up for uh, the local newsletter of that region. Um, we have a little bit more here about the Long Island Sound Study and uh, connections back to that work for context a little bit about our team. 
um, the resource hub itself and why we developed it. And then um, ways to link back to our calendar and um, a place where we can highlight our current opportunities, uh, such as the grant writing and planning support assistance that we were discussing earlier. So finally, um, we also have here the ability to do a search by you know a, a search word. So let's say I wanted to, you know, learn, see if there was any resources relevant to policy, I could just type that in. And this is returning, um, you know, the various categories of resources. You can see some trainings um, related to policy. Um, but then there's also events, you know, workshops could be included there. And then the resources, um, you know, that uh, would would relate, um, you know, in some way uh, to that, that word. So, um, you know, we have set it up to work best with using the filters. Um, that's why we have developed these multiple paths where you uh, can, you know, access and search for the resources that you're looking for, um, you know, but you could, if you're looking for a keyword, also try um, the search in that direction as well. So uh, I am uh, happy to take any questions that people have about the resource hub. Uh, there are a couple questions in the chat. Um, one we answer, but just for everybody, when will um, folks have access to the Hub website? Great question. Um, we we don't have an exact date, but uh, sometime in January is when the official launch is planned. Um, there was also a question about the case studies and if it will showcase projects on both public and private land. Um, we haven't had a, a criteria for it being one or the other. So, um, you know, we're mostly featuring projects that we think other regions would be interested in and projects that are um, transferable, you know, in some way. And mm -hmm. um, more recent projects also so that um, they might have a more accurate, say, information about how much it costs, et cetera. And I believe we do have one, um, there is one case study that is on um, private land that we do have up on the website um, or will be on the website. Okay, and there was another question. Um, will you be putting up other resources from Connecticut institutions, organizations on the website? How would we go about doing it? Is it on the Oregon Institute to send the resources to someone at Sea Grant? Yeah, so um, hopefully what you're um, what you're thinking of is, is already there. But um, but if not, you can you can go ahead and use the contact form to contact one of us and ask. Um, you know, again, we've. Uh, well, it's, it's very possible that that we've missed things, um, but we've really uh, attempted to be thoughtful about um, choosing resources that are, you know, relevant to this local area and are um, specific to resilience and uh, advancing the implementation of resilience uh, projects. There's, I don't see any other questions, but there were a lot of comments about um, how great people thought it looked and that it looks very user-friendly and people seem very excited. A few folks that were interested in testing, if that's helpful to us. Um, and then there was one more comment about the case studies, about looking for case studies that involve tribal nations um, collaborations. So, um, 
Oh. Yeah, maybe we can see if we can uh, find a good example of that to post on the website. Yeah, thank you. Um, and um, it's great to get, uh, you know, that that sort of feedback and, and hear more about what people would like to see. So, um, you know, if you have additional thoughts, um, you know, after the workshop, um, you know, please do send them along as, uh, you know, this this resource is, is for all of you. So, um, you know, we want to make sure that it's useful, you know, relevant, and um, that, you know, this is something that you, you know, come to uh, because you know that, you know, here's where you can find um, the most up-to-date, you know, funding that's open. You can, you can look ahead um, and uh, you can learn about what your neighbors are doing too. And there's a couple more questions that did just roll in. Um, what do we have planned next? Um, have we thought about a journal style publication? Um, I don't know that we have. I don't know if you want to answer that, Hunt Up. Um, specific to, um, a publication about the, um, it doesn't uh, say. certain topic in particular or like the resource hub. I, I didn't, yeah, I hadn't thought about that. It doesn't that. say, yeah, maybe, um, I see Sue type that question. So if you have more, uh, thoughts or clarification, let us know. Um, there was a question, can you post technology tools for polling community members? Um, we, we don't, um, currently have, uh, I think something like a, at that level of specificity, but we do have some tools regarding, um, recommendations for community engagement that are, um, you know, locally developed, <laughs> um, reports. So, um, so I think maybe within some of those, they might have some more specific recommendations. And, um, you know, if something is, I, I mean, it, we can also always talk, you know, one-on-one um, -on -one to share what we've, uh, you know, seen be successful. Yes. And there was just some more discussion in the chat about um, there's maybe a group of youth that might be interested in interviewing us for a video and podcast series. And um, Sue did clarify that, you know, she was thinking um, just some stories about our work, I think, in general and what we're doing in our projects. So I think that's something, um, you know, we can look more into and, and think about. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, okay. Thanks for that suggestion, Sue. We'll look into that. Okay. Well, thank you everyone um, so much. And uh, we look forward to following up um, with the full version soon. Okay. If I re I've taken over screen sharing again, right? Everybody sees my screen. Just making sure I got all my windows correctly. Oh, there's our question slide. Thank you all for your comments and questions. And thank you, Deb, for that great overview. Um, next up, it is time for our first round of concurrent breakouts. So we have arrived at our first stretch break of the morning. Thank you so much to our speakers in the last session. I know that went by super quickly. Um, we're going to take a five minute break here. It is 1021. So let's say 1026. And for anyone who hasn't walked away from their computer yet, just to note that we're going to show a slideshow of photos during this break um, and the subsequent break from our recent um, resilience field trips that we held all around the sound in November. So take a look. You might see yourself if you are at one of those events and we'll see everybody back in five minutes. 1026.
Thank you. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Hopefully everyone is making their way back. I got to sit into a little bit of the New York session. It was great. I hope the Connecticut one went well. And uh, Sarah, I'm going to turn it to you. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I I know we're at the tail end of our, our workshop here. Um, I just want to thank everyone who, who's, who tuned in and stayed on um, for participating. Um, I think we had some some really great um, speakers, and thank you to our support team for making this webinar uh, run really smoothly. 
Um, so as we've said multiple times, we'll be sharing out the recording from this, the main meeting and then all of the breakout rooms. So the morning um, session with the EJ, um, the, the EJ session, and then the NOAA Co County uh, Coastal Snapshots, and then the afternoon session with the um, code, codes and ordinances for Connecticut and New York. Um, everything will be made available afterwards. And, um, you know, if you have any questions, please, please do reach out. Um, I just want to share our contact information for the Sustainable and Resilient Communities Extension Professionals team. So, um, you know, again, we have uh, Sarah Powell, who is our, um, you know, kind of uh, leader for this workshop here today and did a great job putting everything together. Um, she's the SRC for Westchester County. We have Elizabeth Hornstein, who is the SRC for Suffolk County. Uh, myself is uh, the contact for Nassau County. And then we have Sarah Schechter, who is the contact for Eastern Connecticut, and Deb Abibu, who is the contact for uh, Western Connecticut. And our email addresses are on this slide if you need that. All right, so I'm just going to go into a little more detail on some of the uh, Long Island Sound resilience programs that we have available right now. Um, we did share this information at the beginning of the webinar, but um, you know, here it is again for your uh, for your interest. So if you have your phone handy, there's a handy QR code that you can scan, um, and that'll take you directly to a page to, to help you learn a little bit more information. But again, this track one program is the Long Island Sound Resilience Planning Support Program. Um, so through this program, we are hoping to help support communities in their planning support efforts. Um, we are um, accepting applications until December 15th at midnight. Um, the types of projects that we're looking to support through this program are climate change risk or vulnerability assessment, um, strategy development or project planning, product prioritization and funding guidance, <laughs> um, uh, preliminary community engagement or you know project site feasibility or conceptual design. Uh, those are just kind of examples. We are not, you know, limiting it to just those examples, but um, those are the types of kind of preliminary planning efforts we're looking to support through this program. Uh, next slide. And then the track two program is the Long Island Sound Grant Writing Assistance Program. As I said at the beginning, this is a second round of the Grant Writing Assistance Program. So this, was avail this has been available since November of last year. Um, and this program is essentially a grant to get a grant. So communities that participate in this program can receive support for uh, grant preparation and writing. And so that could include, you know, budget preparation, cost benefit analysis, writing and narrative development, mapping um, or application preparation and submission. Um, and any phase of a project, so planning, design, or implementation project is something that you can apply to the grant writing assistance for support program for to get um, support to apply to a grant. So ideally the, you know, the intent of these two programs, track one and track two, are to help foster a sustainable and resilient Long Island Sound community and advance the implementation of projects. Next slide. All right, so we have uh, two more uh, polls here, two final polls for you to answer. Um, you know, to get your feedback on which session you found most useful today, you can answer multiple um, times. So if you found a few of them to be really useful, you can answer, um, you know, can select as many as you would like. Now we'll leave this up for a little bit. All right, so it looks like a lot of you liked the um, introduction and the intro to the Resilience Resource Hub. 
we are all very excited about that release as well. So um, we're hoping to get that resource to you officially in January. And a lot of you really liked the uh, Coastal County Snapshots tool. All right, this is great feedback. Um, you know, as always, we're taking this feedback in um, and incorporating it into all of our training and workshops throughout the remainder of the of the year and into next year. And then we'll be using it to kind of craft our um, plan for next year's annual by state workshop. So our last question is, what topics would you like to be covered at a future workshop? And you can just write this in. All right, great. Some answers coming in. Um, networking, longer breakout sessions. We always struggle with that, I know. <laughs> resilience planning and funding, implementing resilience projects, strategies for community education in depressed communities, retreat. Examples or case studies of nonprofits who have gone through the planning and grant writing assistance efforts. Yes, we will definitely be focusing on that at future workshops because we will hopefully have a big pool of um, successful projects at that point. How can we get more communities involved or how can we get our community involved? Networking, practical ways to implement these topics, implementation, environmental justice, funding opportunities, networking in the same ge geographic area. Great, thank you so much for this feedback. This is very helpful to us. Marine habitat management, integrated and balanced social ecological out outcomes. Time to work in small groups. A map of who does what. How to build community support to get municipality leaders to actually make changes rather than following big money interests. All right. I think if you click to the next slide, we should still people should still be able to answer Sarah. So maybe we can. Yeah, I was going to say, I think this will stay up and sorry if I'm stealing your thunder, but I don't know if I'll put this in the notes. So I want to let everyone know, hopefully when you exit out of here, there will also be an opportunity. Um, a window will pop up in your browser and you can continue to provide us feedback. We, we greatly appreciate it. Yes. Thank you for the reminder, Sarah. So you'll all get a an evaluation survey that should pop up when you close this window. We would appreciate if you fill it out. Um, as always, we appreciate your feedback and your time today with all of us. This has been a really great morning. Um, thank you to all of our speakers. Materials will be sent out after the meeting to everybody who registered. So um, please reach out if you have questions. Um, and thank you again. And we'll um, we'll see you soon. Thank you.